My name is Beate Diel. I am a clinical neurophysiologist and neurologist. I work at University College London in London, England at Queen Square. And uh, what motivated us for the current study is that it is very common that patients who have survived a stroke start suffering from epilepsy. I think there is not enough knowledge uh, in the broader community of more general neurologists as well as general practitioners about the problem of post-stroke epilepsy. And we wished to identify how common it is in our cohort. And secondly, we wish to identify whether there are any risk factors that might predispose a person suffering from a stroke to develop post-stroke epilepsy. In order to accomplish this, we went back to a research database, which is headed uh, by Professor Kathy Price at the Wellcome uh, Trust Center for Neuroimaging. Um, she has for many, many years um, invested in the PLURAS database, which is a database on prediction of language and recovery following strokes. This uh, depository or repository of um, post-stroke and of stroke patients actually um, is a unique opportunity because all the brain scans are acquired in a very similar way um, and uh, there are a large number of data sets in there, currently uh, uh, about a thousand. Um, therefore, we investigated um, in how many of these we could identify who had post-stroke epilepsy. Turns out that uh, we found actually about 450 data sets where we found a full questionnaire that allowed us to identify who had post-stroke epilepsy. And um, we then took it further to investigate whether there was any difference in age, gender, handedness in the groups who developed post-stroke epilepsy and who didn't. Um, firstly, we found a high number and percentage of people developing post-stroke epilepsy, 11%. Secondly, we found there was no difference in gender or handedness, but there was quite a significant difference in age. So the average age of our post-stroke epilepsy cohort um, was 44 years, whereas uh, people who suffered a stroke and did not develop epilepsy were 56 years old on average. Um, so I thought that was uh, a, a first important finding. Secondly, we went ahead and uh, analyzed in great detail the lesion and the distribution of the lesions uh, with a lesion mapping algorithm. And what we found is that the volume of the lesions in the group that had post-stroke epilepsy was almost double the size than the uh, volume of destructive brain tissue and people who did not develop post-stroke epilepsy. So size matters, age matters. Lastly, we were investigating whether there's a particular area in the brain that uh, might increase the risk to develop post-stroke epilepsy. We did found one area in the left hemisphere, in our left hemispheric um, stroke survivors. Um, this area was affected in about two-thirds of all our post-stroke epilepsy patients and only uh, in, a, in a much smaller number of the stroke survivors that did not um, end up having epilepsy. Um, on the other hand, we have to say it was not such a specific predictor to have a stroke affecting this locus because if we were looking at the entire group um, of patients who had damage in that area, only a third of them would have post-stroke epilepsy. Yet, there may be some further findings to follow up on, um, and I think that would be uh, the subject of a further study in the future. I think we have found that young age, large um, stroke would be a risk factor to develop epilepsy. Um, the hope is always that once we are able to really treat or prevent epileptogenesis, that uh, we could perhaps enroll patients who seem to be at higher risk to develop epilepsy after such an injury. Um, and that might uh, be a good enriched patient population for such a study in the future. Um, I think it is also uh, a fact that might alert clinicians in case people come back and develop spells or you know, paroxysmal events of 
undetermined etiology to really be quite mindful that those could be seizures.